Now we're going to kind of change our focus and talk about how we kind of think in anthropology. So we're going to look at some theories, field methods, and um, some ethical issues. So first, you know, what is a theory? A theory is an explanation of events and related observations based on unfalsified hypotheses. So it's an overarching concept that provides a guide for thinking. It's an explanation of a phenomenon. Um, it has its own vernacular. It helps us predict behavior. So again, it's something that's been observed over and over and over and over and over again, and people haven't been able to hy or falsify it. So it becomes generally accepted in the discipline in and of itself. So we're going to talk about a few of the theories that have emerged in anthropology. Some of them are still influential today. Uh, some of them are not. So one of the first ones is that was strictly developed for anthropology is called unilineal evolution or 19th century evolutionism or even social evolutionism so lots of different terminologies and this one claims that all societies develop in a specific order so and this is cultural evolution is unchanging from society to society. It's based primarily on technological advances, which if you look at technology, it does seem to advance in a particular order. So we go from very simple tools um, that are made by hand to ones that are made by machine and so forth. So in that case, unilineal evolution does seem to hold true, but when we apply it to other elements of culture, it falls apart. So these stages that unilineal evolutionists identified um, were savagery, barbarism, and civilization. <clears throat> now, people like Edward Tyler here and also Lewis Henry Morgan didn't really go out and collect their own data. They relied on things that were being published by people who had traveled. Um, so they, it they didn't get that first-hand account of what things were going, of what things were happening. Now, one of the things that um, unilinealists suggested was this idea of psychic unity and this is a concept that states uh, human minds share similar characteristics which you might be now immediately thinking about Noam Chomsky's ideas but the difference here is that uh, the psychic unity means that all people and societies go through the same process of development so again there's this ass assumption that everything happens the same way. There was also an assumption that the pinnacle of this cultural evolution was Western society. So it was very ethnocentric, racist um, theory. Um, it is, there was this assumption that people from industrialized nations were more intelligent and so forth. So one of the reasons that it is important is because it, it is the first attempt to come up with a systematic method for thinking and about and explaining human societies. So it's it's important in, in that sense. Um, it is too simplistic to explain the variety in societies, so it's really been discredited in anthropology and not used at all. Next is historicism, and this was developed by Franz Boas and his um, cadre of students. And this is really kind of a almost a backlash to unilineal evolution. They claimed that it was ridiculous for anthropologists to try to come up with theories until we actually collected enough data to be able to do that. So one of the things that Boaz was responsible for was sending out his inst his students to collect data. And this is where that whole particularism comes in, is where you collect every little detail you can about a society, and then it was compiled into works that we refer to as ethnographies. So this process of going out and gathering all this data is often referred to as ethnography, and the end product of that study is also referred to as an ethnography. So pretty important approach um, because it really requires anthropologists to be culturally relative because Boaz um, claimed that um, each society has its own unique 
historical development. And so to really understand a society, we have to understand how it all worked within its own cultural context and also its environment. So again, this is really where cultural relativism starts to uh, make its appearance in anthropology. Um, so very important. Everybody, even archaeologists, have to be histor um, historicists because we need to collect data and get down all of these particulars of societies to even begin to understand what's going on. So fieldwork was quite valued with this within this approach. Um, there were some differences. Boaz saw that each individual was important and a basic component of a society. So he thought what he got from informants it was basically representative of the culture as a whole. Um, one of his students, Alfred Krober, didn't see individuals as fundamental elements of society. He thought that there were these kind of internal laws that don't originate from its individuals. And he referred to this as the super organic. It's kind of this impersonal force that's kind of driving culture. <laughs> 